Um, being a woman in a male-dominated scene, it is tough sometimes. I don't, I don't know, people just, I guess they're not used to seeing females that are so into cars, but I feel like majority is um, supportive of it and they think it's great, but you do have those people who look at you different because you are a female. They feel like you don't know what you're talking about, you really don't have an interest, you're just here for attention, and you just kind of have to brush those people off or, you know, kind of show them that you do know what you're talking about and you are here for a reason. And though it's a male dominated thing, it's never really steered me away from that. Uh, I know it's something that I love hard, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I have a 2015 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack in B5 Blue. Some of the modifications I've done to my car, um, it's lowered on H&R springs. Uh, some of the other suspension upgrades are sway bar end links from B. Woody Performance. I have Ace Alloy wheels in matte black. Uh, put some wider tires on the car, 305s on the rear, 275s on the front. Uh, one of the first um, upgrades that I did to my car was exhaust. I uh, love the sound of a loud V8, so uh, it's just a resonator muffler delete, but it sounds great on this car. The sport mode tightens the suspension up and it, it doesn't put it into the four cylinder mode, which I hate uh, when the exhaust, when you hear the exhaust in the four cylinder mode, it sounds horrible. So I keep it in sport mode, it keeps the four cylinder mode out of it and it sounds good all the time. So I just only drive the car in sport mode. I feel like that's most comfortable to me. I, I, don't, I don't usually drive slow, I drive fast and I try to, I enjoy the car, so I drive it the way it should be doing, I feel like. But um, I feel like it's very comfortable to drive, but it's also fun. I really like a clean car, so my car looks very stock, but there have been minor modifications to make it stand out, make it different and what I like. One of the small modifications are the emblems on the side. The stock emblems that come on a scat pack are very colorful and I wanted to keep the carbon fiber black and blue thing going on the car, so I replaced them with carbon fiber scat pack B heads. Some people think that they're aliens, but they are scat pack B heads. Some other small changes that I made to the car. Uh, my last Challenger I had before this, I had a fuel door on it. I actually took the black fuel door off of that one and put onto this one pink and black because that was the theme on my last Challenger. So I kept it on this one to give it a little girly touch to it. Um, I've also the B. Woody Performance Sway Bar in links that I put on the car. I had them powder coated hot pink. Um, my license plate is actually, it says her scat. Uh, I always like having a funny license plate or something different. And my last Challenger actually had Hemi Now with a question mark, which I thought was pretty funny. And I was gonna carry that onto this car, but I kind of got tired of people asking me, is that your boyfriend's car? Is that your husband's car? And they never believed it was my car. So I said, you know, I'm gonna put her scat on it. And there's no question, it's my car. It's not his car. Well, I was actually brought home from the hospital in a Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am, but unfortunately my parents had to sell it because of me. So I guess you could say I was even, I, I just drove home from the hospital in a cool car, so maybe that's what started it, I don't know. What did bring me to have an interest in cars, and it's like as far back as I can remember, I mean, I always had an interest in cars, even if it was Barbie cars or Hot Wheels cars. I mean, I always had an interest in cars at a young age, and my mom actually, she told me the story. I had colic when I was a baby, and she said the only way that she could shut me up was put me in the car and take me for a ride, and it just kind of made me laugh, and I'm like, huh, okay, that's funny. And then I was told the story that my great-grandpa on my grandma's side was, he actually owned um, race cars, and he had um, a friend of his that raced the cars, actually die in an accident and after that happened he gave up um, the race cars and he 
he couldn't deal with it anymore. It, it tore him up pretty bad, but I, I didn't know that there was, that was even in my family. And so that was pretty neat to find out. Um, and it was like, you know, maybe it really is just kind of in your blood. I run the Cars and Coffee in Fayetteville. We're technically located in Hope Mills, the outskirts of Fayetteville. Um, we have a pretty good turnout. It's grown through the years. Currently our largest turnout, we had 500 cars out there. That was somewhat recent in June. We usually have around 200 to 300 cars, but on a good day, sometimes it's 400, 500 cars out there. Cars and Coffee is an event that you see worldwide. It's where car enthusiasts come together to talk cars and drink coffee usually. We have a coffee shop at our Cars and Coffee, so you can come get coffee, cupcakes, um, talk to other car enthusiasts, have a good time. Um, you can see other people's prides and joys, what they've put their time and effort into and what they're interested in. Um, we're um, getting the word out. The It's usually a great variety of cars. Through the years, it has changed. It started out, there were a lot of imports and people complained there were a lot of imports. Then it turned into a lot of Mustangs. Then it turned into a lot of Mopars. Then it turned into, it's a lot of new cars. And I've tried to really get the word out to the classic car owners, let them know the more classic cars that show up, the more you're gonna see show up at the event. And that worked. We had some show up and before you knew it, it was a whole crowd of classic cars. And so now we have a huge, a huge showing of a huge variety of cars and it just continues to grow. When it started out, um, actually someone else was over Cars and Coffee before me. It was a smaller gathering. He would kind of invite his friends on Facebook. There would be maybe 50 cars at the most, but usually it was less than that. And he wasn't really happy with the turnout he was getting. Um, and he had a lot going on in life and he decided he was done with Cars and Coffee. Um, when I saw his Facebook post that he was done with it and if anybody wanted to take it over, they could. I said that I would take it over if no one else would. After nobody else wanted to take it over, I said, well, you know, I'll do it. At the time, um, I had just finished college, and when I was in college, part of my focus was marketing. It was business, but marketing, accounting. I enjoy marketing. I have a lot of fun with that, so I knew that this would be an opportunity for me to really have some fun with marketing and also something I love, cars. I didn't want to see the event end also, um, so I took over. I created a Facebook page for a fan page, a group page, um, tried to get the word out the best I could. Through the years, the ways I've tried to get the word out have changed, but um, it grew and grew, and now here we are with, I think we're over 2,500 members on our group page, and we have a really good showing out there. So from less than 50 cars to, we've had up to 500 cars now. Um, cars and Coffee Fayetteville is a little different some, than some of the other Cars and Coffees because we actually have done some extra events on the side. It's not just been a regular Cars and Coffee meet every single month. Um, through the years, at Christmas, we've had a cruise where we took gifts to the kids at uh, Falcons Children's Home. That was one of our events that we've done. Um, we have trunk or treats and we have a trunk or treat. We don't just have a normal trunk or treat in the parking lot. We actually set up in the theater and we have games for the kids and things for the kids to do besides just trunk or treat. Um, my favorite thing with the trunk or treat every year has actually been Fear Factor. That's definitely what I had the most fun with. I would put some different games and things for the kids to eat or do that was scary. And I've we try to do other events to help people in the community. Uh, we've taken donations for the homeless, um, for Thanksgiving for people in need. Um, one of the other special events that we've had, we worked with the theater because where we meet is actually a theater and um, we've had movie showings where we had a car meet before and then we go in and see the movie together. We actually did this for Fast and Furious after Paul Walker passed away. That was definitely one of my favorite events. We had a cruise to the theater. So all everyone cruised together to the theater. We got to the theater, had a little car meet, had a DJ playing Fast and Furious music in the parking lot. 
Then um, we did a rev in honor of Paul Walker, so everyone did a synchronized rev, and that was a pretty neat moment. It really brought the car community to get together, I feel like. Um, I think Paul Walker's passing just did that by itself, but to have an event like that really, I feel like, brought the car community together in Fayetteville. January 2019, I actually put my first car show together. Um, usually I just do these car meets. I don't really do the car show side of things. But I put a car show together. Um, I decided it would be a great idea to maybe pull together funds to give a kid a scholarship. And so I put all the questions and the answers on Facebook and asked our Facebook group, what, who do you want to give this scholarship to? And everyone chose a kid that he actually wanted to go for heating and air. The car show um, actually brought in $2,905 that we were able to send a kid to college at FTCC for heating and air. Um, the thing I would say that I'm most proud of um, would be being independent um, alone. Um, you don't see many women who can say that um, at 34 years old they own their own house, they own their own car. Um, and are just completely independent on their own. And so that's something that I'm really proud of. Uh, if you're a female and you have an interest, regardless if it's a male-dominated hobby, um, just go for it. Don't let the fear of it being male-dominated uh, steer you clear of that. Just do what makes you happy. You're gonna have always have naysayers, and but you're always gonna have more people probably that back you up and and see that you truly have an interest in that hobby and and respect you for that. Um, but don't let um, the fact that you are female and male-dominated hobby keep you away from that. Um, do what you love and what makes you happy. I'm Jessica Hollander from Stedman, North Carolina. I'm a real person with a real story with a real ride. <laughs>